Hello and welcome to the NBS Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Roman Sanzo. Joining me today is Jacob. Hello. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fine. Well, uh, people who are on the Patreons got to listen to you for the first time, so that's awesome. Uh, on the YouTubes, they're about to listen to you this week. So yeah, um, how, how was your first time listening to yourself? Like, um, how was the experience? I'm not used. I'm not used to listening to the sound of my voice. Honestly, it just ah, yes. pulled off. Totally understandable and totally relatable. It uh, sounds different first... in my head than it does hearing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, it gets. It, it takes time to get used to it, and then um, to a point where you don't even really care anymore. <laughs> yeah. uh, like I, I, you just have to imagine how. The other podcasters or other um, people who do this on a daily basis, uh, Silver, for example, like how, how how things run in his head, like how does he sound and whatnot. Uh, but but anywho, um, I, I hope you enjoy yourself, and I hope this week will be um, something. Uh, let's how about this? Let's just hope that this week will be even more exciting and awesome than last week. Yeah. So, so, anywho, in today's episode, we are going to review the My Little Pony Spirit of the Forest issue number two. Uh, in this issue, the Kiribati Crusaders try to shut down production of Filthy Rich's Lumber Mill to save Whitetail Woods from deforestation. So, um, before we uh, review... Uh, first impressions are in order, and what do you think, man? Well, it's different than it was last week when we hit from a uh, littering problem to de- uh, deforestation problem. The Kiri market said, let's uh, go about it in a unique way on that one. Oh, yeah, that, that is true, that is true. Their, their heart is in the right place, but... Yeah, somebody's uh... going to have to suffer in the end. Yeah, that is true. That is true. That that seems to be the theme. And there's a lot of red tape. (laughs) There's a lot of red tape and legalese in this one. To make, how do I put this? Um, Like I mentioned last week before, um, going through all the proper channels and blah, 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 blah. uh, Everything is uh, prim and proper, but there's always something. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So, yeah. um, If you guys at home have not read this, uh, comic, pause here and go do so. Welcome back, and well, let's start off the review with the main six enjoying a cup of tea. Um, they're teachers, by the way, and they're enjoying their tea time in the school of friendship. Yay! Uh, we don't really see this interior that much, do we? Yeah. I don't want to so, wear star like this. Probably in the council's office. Mm. Makes sense. But anywho, um, we see the main six enjoying a cup of tea, and Rarity says the accursed word of, uh, "It's lovely to have a day in which absolutely nothing unexpected happens." And immediately, and Apple Jack goes, goes, "Don't jinx it, damn it!" <laughs> <laughs> yep, <laughs> and reprimands Rarity for it, and in the next panel, the CMC is coming and uh, screams for help. And yep, <laughs> it's a curse. Uh, it's 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 like how Han Solo says, "I have a bad feeling about this." <laughs> or every adventure, uh, every adventure saying, "Nothing can go wrong." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh boy. So anywho. The CMCs go up to um, their sisters and, well, uh, complain. I won't say complain. Um, ask for help uh, to their sister about what Filthy Rich is doing and so on. Um, from what I understand, uh, the. I'm sorry. Uh, from what I understand, uh, they understood that Filthy Rich did everything proper, but still. Uh, they want to go check out um, how he's doing things and well, legalese and stuff. 
see if anything fishy is going on. And they do. Um, Applejack, Rarity, and also Rainbow Dash head out to Filthy Rich's uh, lumber mill and try to talk to him about the current situation. And this leaves with the other three um, feeling bored except for Fluttershy because no, pr- no problem is a good time in her books. I think it's literally just saying, we're not part of this story today, are we? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Twilight just agrees like, yep. <laughs> and the, the, the visual jokes in this one are just hitting it. Especially that pile of sugar that Pinky has in her tea. Like, you, you just get her... <laughs> you just have to realize... <laughs> Yeah, like you just have to realize, like she is. Oh man, I, I'm not even gonna go there. That's not even funny. So anyway, uh, so anyway, we meet up with the rest of the crew in uh, Phil Face office. Uh, Applejack seems to be the one who's talking to her, and uh, Filthy Rich explains that. Oh yeah, I've met with the city, the town. And they agreed on everything, and uh, everything is above board. And uh, with the little problem about the trash, um, that's that problem is uh, taken care of. And yeah, everything is all good. Um, as he say, uh, my lumber mill is all above board and approved by the city. So by this point, the adults couldn't really do anything about it. And the CMCs just point out to the window saying like, yeah, uh, take a look, see what you've done. Uh, you chopped down the forest and left junk in the river flowing through Ponyville and so on. And um, Filthy here just says, um, it may look bad, but I assure you we know what we're doing uh, here at uh, my mill. Uh, my lumberjacks knows their stuff, which is technically true. Uh, they have years of experience and so on, so on, so on. But Rarity here just says, "Um, uh, you must admit, uh, this certainly doesn't look good for Whitetail Woods uh, to be so barren." And Filthy just says that um, he's doing this to. Uh, sorry, Rarity suggests couldn't he pack up his operations to someplace else? And Filthy just says that now, nah, Whitetail Wood has quality woods, and uh, I want to make it known that um, we are making sorry, uh, we are making products that show how good the lumber is and the finest Ponyville has to offer, and so on. And, and then he... uh, Apple Bloom manches his grandma in the cabin in the woods, <laughs> and Phil Ferrick's demeanor completely changes to 180. Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, and if if you notice, this is not the first time that that, that happened, because uh, in the previous issue, that happened too, and over here, it did happen here also. So, what actually happened? Well, I haven't read to part three yet. It's been a while, so I got no idea. <laughs> yeah, I've forgotten at this point. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's a it's a mystery to both of us. So something really, I won't say bad, but something um, not pleasant happened for Filthy then. So yeah, but he makes it clear that his grandma used to live in the woods. Yeah, so and guess what that means. For- yeah, and he dismiss- dismisses the girls out and kind of doesn't really care about what they have to say after uh, beyond that. So um, the girls head out, I think through the front door this time because it's a lot more rich in nature. And we do see uh, Filthy did what, um, did what he say. Uh, he put out trash cans so that the workers don't Litter the forest, so that's good. That's good. He 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 is a man of his words. Yeah, at least that's one problem he solved. But the overall one isn't gone at this point. Uh, 
<laughs> this is one of those things where I agree because of the story, but in terms of the how do I put this? In terms of the, the this is one of those things where Filthy Rich is not in the wrong, but ah oh man, this, I I like this comic. Uh, this story here is a it 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 asks it's a lot. <laughs> sorry, it asks a lot out of you. Um, it asks you to kind of see the views from both points. Um, Filthy's point of view and also the CMC's point of view. And obviously, as the heroes, the CMC should win kind of thing. But uh, what Filthy is a po- uh, what Filthy is saying too does make a lot of sense later on in the story. But anywho, um, we sorry uh, the the CMCs are not they don't really kind of are they happy. Don't... So, mm, pardon? They don't take uh, they don't take it well. Yeah, and they try to see if they can how do I put this? Find a loophole or find something in the contract that um filthy sign. So they hit to Mermer, and Mermer just says nope. There's uh, there's absolutely nothing she can do. Um, everything uh, has uh, Filthy Slumber Mish was approved moons ago. That's very fascinating, by the way. Uh, she says moon instead of months. So, hmm, the timeline in this universe is really complicated. Yeah, I think. Yeah. But oh, anywho, and, uh, another uh, familiar face makes a comeback. That well, uh, the poor pony carrying the paper. Yeah, although he used to have a better balance last I recall. Yeah, but business is booming. <laughs> yeah, and this is where the divide happens because, well, um, Mimir just says to be honest, the mill has been good to Ponyville. His number is used by many local business, making furnitures, houses, and all sorts of things. Uh, she understands that the mill has, uh, the mill is having an effect on Whitetail Woods, but he isn't doing anything wrong. So this is where one of those things where I am very fascinated to see a younger reader's point of view. Like I could be what you call this. Uh, jaded and uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Starts with an S. I forgot that letter. What was that word? Depressed. Um, no, no, no. That like ah, I forgot. But um, cynical. Yes. Um, I I may be already cynical in all these kind of things. So I would I really want to see what a younger readers or a well, younger readers point of view. Like, what do they think of all of this? <clears throat> but anywho, after getting their answer, the CMCs and their sisters leave town. Sorry, not leave, leave town. Uh, leave home, the town hall. Oh, and um, sorry. two things. Um, uh, correction the, uh, from the last podcast. Um, I stand corrected. Apparently, White Woods is in, jur- in jurisdiction of Ponyville. I just saw it because it's closer to Las Vegas says that it's part of there, but apparently not. Well, it could be it's bigger in a sense. Maybe there's... Hmm. I don't know. Oh, and hmm. also, uh, before they go, Mary Mary goes, Hey, kids, want to get involved in local politics? And that's <laughs> accidentally, Nope. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, and yeah, Mermer just says nobody really wants a pamphlet. <laughs> like, uh... <clears throat> but anywho, um, like I was mentioning before, uh, the CMCs can't really do much, and the sisters don't see any thing wrong with. <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> oh, sorry about that. Uh, the sisters don't really see anything wrong with what uh Phil is doing. So, they kind of tell the girls to, well, try and not think about it. We, they, they'll think of something to kind of 
stop filthy in his tracks or something like that. And um, Applejack here just says that um, when it comes to big business or uh, money, a lot of ponies don't really want to let go of it or they think differently, something like that. So yeah, uh, with that news, the CMCs hit back home while discussing what to do and so on. Uh, like I mentioned before, the girls sleep on it first and the next day, they are tired. They, it looks like they didn't have a good night's sleep. No rest for the weary. Mm-hmm. And while discussing on ideas for how to stop the meal or so on, uh, Diamond here comes up to them and talks to them, which is rare? Hmm. I'm, I'm trying to think. Is this out of character or is this a new leaf for her? Well, considering this post, the... The episode, I figure it is a new leaf, basically. Mm, okay, okay. I mean, um, after her quote-unquote redemption arc, we didn't really see much of her in the series. So... Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah. again, maybe the writer should <laughs> thought of something. I mean, I mean, I guess I see the problem when you basically remove the only one who... We was put up there to uh, create tension and conflict. So what are you gonna mm. do after all the tension and conflict's gone? Yeah, you you remove the antagonist for the protagonist, and now you got well nothing. <laughs> so yeah, uh, continuing on. Uh, Diamond Tiara knows that the CMCs are talking about her dad's lumber mill and. She doesn't like it either, and um, she kind of knew that uh, all the trash that's going on in Whitetail Wood is because of the um, is related to the lumber mill, but didn't want to say anything because it could be or could be not. Who knows? But in the end, uh, it was, and she she doesn't even like the idea of the mill at all. Like she's oppose of it she, she's against it and um she says something to the uh she says something to a kid of uh we used to love running around in the woods looking for the spirit for us and now it's like he doesn't even care uh, he thinks the wood are just another thing to buy and sell and she says i wish the spirit of the forest was real maybe it'll stop my daddy to I'm sorry, uh, maybe it'll tell my daddy to stop and with that the cmc's has an idea well mostly apple bloom has an idea and they skip school to go to the clubhouse to i i don't think they're going to the clubhouse uh they're skipping school to execute their plan <laughs> so uh i think this is in the near evening yeah past near the near the evening um we see the lumberjacks are going to do their jobs um this beauty ought to get my quota for the day so yeah um they have quotas on how many trees they need to chop and so on and suddenly oh no a monster appears and scares the bejesus out of the guy he runs away and we see that oh no um the monster is kind of flimsy looking, huh? But we see that uh, it has been scaring the lumberjacks uh, here and there, making sure that they don't finish their jobs. And with that, um, the workers are scared and couldn't really do their work. Well, I'd be probably scared too if I saw that. That shot yeah. at the end, you know. Oh god, yeah. That's Plowy. Oh god, you know yep. from Undertale. Yep, yep. Like uh, but... those first twenty seconds before his boss battle starts, and oh, he's against that in that frame. It's literally that... damn. Yeah, that 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 view, that panel is just 
horror incarnate. So anywho, um, getting back, uh, the, in the cafeteria, the workers discuss about what's going on and they're kind of scared. Um, it's, they, they feel like it's a warning for them to stop and Filthy comes in and says what's going on here and the workers explains to him that uh, there's a spirit, there's something and they're scared to do their work so they're just leaving town and with that uh, Filthy has no workers in the mill and that leaves Ponyville's mill without any production. Um, he uh, The next day he goes back to Ponyville to tell the townsfolk that they're halting, well, he's halting production because, uh, well, there's no workers, can't do much, but he'll do his best to fulfill uh, any current orders that he has. And then you get to see the panic in some residents. Uh, sorry, uh, you get to see some panic in some residents. Uh, one is a carpenter, and he has uh, he got order for twelve tables for the Ponyville cart tournament that he needs to finish. And without the lumber, without any new lumber, he couldn't finish them. Uh, one is a violin maker who has an order of six dozen violins. Uh, the other one is a carpenter who is making sh cabinets for Sugar Corner and so on and so on and so on. So, yeah, this, this is terrible and bad, but uh, what can Filthy do? Because right now there's nothing he can do because there's no workers, there's no whatever it is. So, production has to be halted. And... Sweetie Bell and sorry, um, Apple Bloom and Scootaloo are um, celebrating their victory, and Sweetie Bell is just kind of Berlin. bum. Yeah, like she she's a bit sad on the news because of their actions. People can't finish their job or do their jobs. Scootaloo just says maybe they'll find another job. I'm and she sure she'll be fine and so on. Well, that's a bit. Uh... I don't know how to put it, short sighted. Yeah, but that, that's it. <laughs> that's it. A cute remarks. Uh, how somebody gonna work uh, then? Yeah, but but that's the theme for this comic. Uh, it's asking a lot out of the readers to uh, sympathize with um, one thing or the other. I mean, sympathize with A or sympathize with B. Uh, what do you do? Kind of situation, and that is pretty cool. <clears throat> but anywho, in the top panel, the adults are acting a little bit suspicious. I don't think they're suspicious. I think they're trying to solve the problem. Like, there's a problem, and since they're tasked with uh, the lumber mill, so they're trying to catch the spirit if it's real or not. But anywho, um, the CMC says that, okay, um, we're going to... Uh, totally shut down the mill. Uh, we're gonna. Uh, I say. Uh, I say. It sounds like the spirit being successful. When you say so, it seems like they 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 might know something more about it. <laughs> so they hit. So so we have a panel of uh, the spirit thingy, and we see that oh, it's stalking a what should we call this carpenter? Oh no, sorry, not carpenter, lumberjacks, and he's about to cut a tree at night and oops it fell into a trap oh yay and it's discovered that the lumberjacks are the three sisters while the spirit of first are the cmc's oh who would have thought yeah. uh, so uh, I, I just love this line from applejack of course, my little sister is sabotaging a major industrial operation. Of course she is. <laughs> Wait, did that happen at some point in the past? I forgot. I don't know. I mean, it, it feels like 
if there's anything involving um trouble Applejack sisters got to be involved in one shape or form. Yeah. <laughs> but anywho, um, they explain themselves to the sister. Uh, they say that um, Filthy wasn't going to change, so we try to do something that might make a change, and so on. And Rarity just says, "Girl, we we understand your frustration, but." You are not just hurting filthy riches, uh, filthy rich with the, this plan. You are putting all those crafts pony out of work, which is true. Which is true, and um, we see a panel where filthy is running in because uh, he heard that the trap works and wanted to see if it's really disputed or not, and discovers that oh, uh, it was the CMCs. Uh, doing this and oh he is angry he he chews them up and says something uh says, says this um you you thought one of my grandmother's story would convince me to shut down you thought you could stop a factory with a fable uh gr- girl grow up girls this ain't no spirit they ain't uh, sorry. there's ain't no spirit in the forest just good valuable lumber now get out of here with your foolishness this uh this that's right the mill reopens tomorrow and yeah with that the episode ends and yeah that 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 <laughs> from from the way that filthy's talking ah oh, we, we see the turn the heel turn as they say yeah some bad memories bubbling up on the surface yeah, and I'm I'm guessing the third issue does reveal why he feels that way and so on. But man, uh, that sudden turn to evil, like, hmm, okay, um, you you weren't that bad before, but now, hmm, that was. But I, I, sorry, the straw that brought the camels back. Yeah, but I could understand. Like he's make he's doing a business here, and it's he's not only thinking of himself, but others too. All the deals that he makes and whatnot, and all the workers that he needs to pay, and and this is what I this is why I mentioned before. This comic has a lot of uh, a lot out of the readers, because well, the CMC ain't wrong, and Filthy Rich is trying to do business. And he ain't wrong too. So who do you support? Who how who do you lean on? And I'm guessing issue three will answer all of that for us in a neat tidy bow. Yeah. But with that, uh, comic ends. And so, uh, Jacob, what do you think of this comic? Well, it's been good, more or less, especially some of the facial expressions. And that flower still gives me the heebie-jeebies. I think the spirit is just giving me the heebie-jeebie. Uh, it's scaring me, man. Like that, that, that. The way it looks, the way the the, the shape that it is. I mean, with those googly eyes. I mean, oh god. <laughs> but still, man. Like still, um, it it is a lot to take in. Um, but yeah, overall the story is not bad. Like I like the story. I I like how it's asking a lot of questions out of the readers. It's not one sided. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's not clean cut as it is. Um, usually when you deal with kids' show, it's always clean cut. Uh, the main characters are the good guys. The bad guys are the bad guys. But here, this now, you're not even sure. Like, Filthy is just doing a job. He's giving a job to people. And that's where I really enjoy the comic. Like, it's doing a lot of things where it's asking the readers, what do you think? How, how would you solve this problem? Hmm. <laughs> but anywho, uh, yeah. 
with that, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Uh, any fi- any other final thoughts? Here go. Uh, no, not really, honestly. <laughs> All righty then. And with that, uh, let's wrap things up. Let's wrap things up. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at themusicgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitter. The show's Twitter account is at the MBS show. And my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Jacob, where can the good people find you? Uh, people can find me on DeviantArt under Jakob on Twitter, on Twitter under Tales of the Ashes, or on filmfiction.com under uh, JFT. All right, all right, all right. Go check him out, guys. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And Stitch Radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Uh, if you would like to support the show, you can do so at Patreon.com slash NBS show. With your support, you get a week's early access to reviewing special podcasts, exclusive and deleted content, and a huge thank you from me. Talking about a thank you, <laughs> I would like to thank you, Jakob. Thank you very much. Um, Lucky Knight, myself, Black, and also Tristan. Thank you so much, guys. You have been great. So anyway, I have... <laughs> so anyway uh, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm Binyaka. And we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the MBS show. See ya. Goodbye. Bye.